and welcome to today's equine learning segment where we are going to talk about equine coat colors. Like everything that I talked to you about, it's a very vast subject and, and I have had a lot of fun researching some of the history behind these subjects because I haven't always been aware of some of the history behind it. So um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the history and how far different colored horses go back um, because humans, ever since horses have been domesticated, humans have been breeding horses a lot of times for their coat color um, dating way back before even the Middle Ages. So, um, spotted and diluted horses, so when they say diluted they're referring to lighter color horses, were more frequent from the beginning of the domestication of the horse until the end of the Roman Empire. Whereas solid colors like uh, bay, black, and chestnut were the were predominant in the Middle Ages. Um, there was an there was an actual scientific experiment, experiment, sorry, done by the Institute for Zoo and Wildlife Research, and the study reveals that the diversity of coat colors in horses has been strongly affected by cultural differences since their initial domestication around 3500 BC. So they investigated the history of the domestic horse's coat colors and they analyzed a data set of 201 samples of ancient horse DNA. Um, in total, they detected 14 different color types. Early breeds showed six color variants, of which three were already present in pre-domestic horses. During the Bronze Age, which was 2700 BC, to 900 BC, and during the Iron Age, which was 900 BC to 400 AD, the number of color variants further increased from six to nine. So that indicates to the, in the scientific experiment that humans had a preference for horse colors long, a long, long time ago. Um, and during these periods, the, like I said earlier, the spotted and diluted horses were more frequent. At the beginning of the Middle Ages, white and spotted horses remained the most popular. And if you think about historical books or movies, you often hear about um, the, the hero riding or the royalty riding in on a white horse. Um, but this changed during the medieval times where the attractiveness of spotted and white horses decreased and solid coat colors, especially chestnut, became more dominant. And they sort of alluded to different reasons for this, um, one of which may have been um, developments in weaponry, such as the longbow during that time, um, where these horses that were spotted or more brightly colored were easier targets. So that's where the darker colored horses, they blended in a little bit more and those became more popular, especially in, in military. Um, today, there are dozens of coat colors and variations within each classification of each color. So today, you know, a lot of genetics and science goes into a lot of those big breeders when they're trying to get the perfect color for their breed registry or the perfect color for the show ring. Um, it's not always guaranteed and they're still trying to perfect these coat genetics and breeding horses to guarantee that they're going to be a certain color. Um, so the basic outline of equine coat color genetics has largely been solved and the DNA test to determine the likelihood that a horse will have offspring of a given color have been developed for some colors, but not all. Um, discussion and research and even controversy um, still continue about these things, um, especially when they're trying to get into um, color shades and patterns versus solid colors. Um, so today we're going to talk to you specifically about the color horses that we have at CTR because we could go into all the rainbow colors in the equine world, but I know that you all want to learn about CTR's horses. Um, I also think it's interesting to point out that while most horses do remain the same color throughout life, um, some horses will develop a different coat color than they, than they were born with, especially gray horses. A lot of gray horses are actually born a darker color 
and they lighten over time. Um, for example, I know Kay, when she was young, she was a very dark, deep, dappily gray, and you will see in tonight's segment that she has really lightened up a little bit. So with, with this segment tonight, you're gonna be getting this handout, it's two pages, sorry. And it's a picture of eight of our horses, not all of them, but I wanted to touch on the different colors. And you're going to just draw a line to the, the color horse that we go over and we'll talk about each one and a little bit more information about the colors of each of these horses. So we're gonna pause. All right, so behind me we have Captain, who, since we are in week 15, you all have grown to love just like we do. And Captain's coat color is black. Black horses are actually more rare. Um, usually you see the variations of brown, but as you can see, Captain is all black. Some of, some of his coat you can see is, has started to lighten a little bit due to the sun, and on his face, since he's 34 years old, he has started to gray a little bit, just like we do as we age. <laughs> He's still very handsome and stoic. All right, and then we're gonna walk out into the field and see some of the other ones. All right, so before I talk about Tilly behind me, I also wanted to point out, I forgot to mention earlier, that keep in mind through this that there are four basic horse colors, and those are bay, brown, black, and chestnut. Everything else is a variation of these colors or an absence of color. So behind me we have Tilly. I'll step out of the frame here so you can get a better look at her. She is an Overo and she is an American paint horse. So typically with the American paint horses you will see that different splotches of color all over them. There are many different kinds and patterns of American paint horses. So like I said, hers is Overo. And what makes an Overo horse is the white uneven splotches all over her. You can see she doesn't have as many splotches as some paint horses. Another thing Another characteristic of an Overo is that they typically, not always, but they typically have dark legs. She has a few white markings on her legs. And they also typically, not always, have a bald face. So as we're coming around Tilly's other side here, you can see that pretty much the whole left side of her face is white. And she has that nice, that light pink, uh, pink pigment all over that left side of her face. All right, so we're gonna pause and we'll go to the next horse. All right, now in front of us we have Dreamer, and Dreamer's color is classified as bay. So characteristics of a bay horse are a brown body color with black point coloration. So when you're talking about point coloration, they're referring to mane, tail, ear, and kind of like the edges. You can see that he's dark brown, but his legs kind of fade into black and he has black points all over him. Without these things, they cannot be considered a bay horse. They might have white markings on them, and we will talk about markings in a future segment. Um, they have dark skin, except under those white markings where the skin is pink. And genetically, a bay color occurs when a horse carries both the agouti gene and a black base coat. <laughs> so as you can see, we can go into real specifics here with different genes and genetics. Um, well, the basic concepts behind bay coloring are fairly simple. The genes themselves and the mechanisms that cause shade variations within the bay family are quite complex and at times disputed. All right, so now we are looking at Stanley, and like Victor, who I know you've also seen, he is considered a chestnut. And the chestnut is a hair coat color consisting of reddish to brown with a mane and tail that are often the same or lighter in color than the coat. 
So chestnut is characterized by the absolute absence of true black hairs, and it is the most common horse color. And it is seen in every, just about every breed of horse. Um, let's see, so chestnut is produced by a recessive gene, and unlike many coat colors, chestnut can be true breeding, which means that assuming they carry no recessive modifiers, that the mating of two chestnuts will produce chestnut offspring every time. Pause and go to the next horse. So we are looking at buttons now, and her coloring is often a little confusing because we have American paint horses that is a breed, and then we have pinto coloring, which lots of a lot of different breeds can have horses that are pinto coloring. So Buttons is a pinto, even though she is not an American paint horse. So now we are looking at Kay. And many times when someone comes to the farm and they describe Kay, they describe her as white. But white horses are actually pretty rare. Only albino horses are considered true white because they have pink skin. So K is considered gray because the pigmentation of her skin is all black underneath this beautiful white coat of hers. Um, so a gray horse is characterized by progressive depigmentation of the colored hairs of the coat. Um, gray horses, like I said earlier, can be born any base color, depending on the other genes present. White hairs begin to appear at or shortly after birth and become progressively more prevalent as the horse ages, as white hairs become intermingled with hairs of other colors. Graying can occur at different rates. It can be super quick with one horse, or it can be very slow on another. And as adults, most gray horses eventually become completely white. Kind of like I said earlier how um, we've been told that when Kay was younger, she had very dark gray dapples throughout. Um, so it's very common in many breeds, and today about 1 in 10 horses carry the mutation for graying with age. All right, so we are looking at Mixie right now. She is an Appaloosa. Appaloosas have different patterns of spots all over them, and we'll get into that a little bit more later. But her coloring is considered roan, specifically red roan. There are many, many, many different types of roan, including a blue roan, but it, it's, um, you can see there is red flecked throughout her skin. So Roan's patterns are characterized by an even mixture of colored and white hairs on the body, while the head and points, as we talked about with points on the bay as well earlier, lower legs, mane, and tail, are mostly solid colored. Horses with Roan coats have white hairs evenly intermingled throughout any other color. Um, and the roan pattern is dominantly inherited and is found in many horse breeds. All right, and last but not least, we have somewhat of a more complicated coloring on a horse. This is Sally, and Sally is has Appaloosa in her. She's a POA. So she's a mixed with a pony of the Americas, and she also has Halflinger in her. So her base color is Palomino. That is the color that all Halflingers are. You see this um, gold coat and a white mane and tail. We call her the blonde bombshell. And the degree of whiteness in Palominos can vary from bright white to yellow. Gen genetically, the Palomino color is created by a single allele of a dilution gene called the cream gene, working on a red chestnut base coat. Um, so she also, see, since she is an Appaloosa, you can see she has the fleckle, the fleckle, the freckled muzzle, like a lot of Appaloosas do. Mixie has it as well. But she also has these spots all over and they've definitely she has gotten more spots as she has aged 
and it is called a snowflake spotted pattern, which means that it's a horse with white spots flex, flex on a dark body, and typically the white spots increase in number as the um, horse ages. And she has definitely had some more spots come in as she has gotten older. So I did not cover all of CTR's horses because some of them are the same. Um, mostly the same, but I want you to have fun looking at the pictures that I give you on the worksheet tonight and see if you can remember the different colors of CTR's horses.